Now look at this picture here. The water receptors or the pharynx. The umami is a section of the tongue which helps to basically uh, connect the tongue to the muscles. And not only that, but it is the larger part of the circumvallate papillae, which registers taste. Um, so you have sour taste sensations in the back. Bitter is in the middle third. Salty is in the front third. And sweet tastes are always in the front of the tongue. Make sure you know these locations on the tongue. Taste sensitivity depends on a person's individual taste significances. Some people taste spicy foods and they start crying. <laughs> Some people eat uh, sugary foods and they're in heaven. Some people just don't taste anything if you especially have anosmia. It exhibits significant individual differences. So everyone has a different taste sensation. However, there's a chemical in a certain food. It's called PTC, short for phenylthiocarbamide. 70% of Caucasians taste it, but the 30% of the rest of the people in population cannot taste this at all. Some people can taste salt better than others. Some people can taste sugar and some foods more than others. By the way, the number of your taste buds, they begin to decline fast when you hit age 50. So it's kind of scary, you know, when older people, they put way too much salt because they can't taste it. And salt is leader of hypertension and can lead to heart disease. The eye and vision. Vision is the most dominant sense in human beings. 70% of the sensory receptors in the humans are in your eyes. 40% of the cerebral cortex is involved in processing visual information. Now let's talk briefly. Of all the four or five senses of the body, a lot of people in a survey said they would rather have their eyesight more than anything else. Would you rather be blind or would you rather be deaf? Personally, I'd like to keep my eyesight. Moving on, let's talk about the anatomy of the eye. The eye is an actual organ. Both of them are. In diameter, they're two and a half centimeters or precisely one inch thick. Only anterior one sticks is the visible part of the eye. Think about it. You can't really see a person's entire eye. If you did, it would be out of their head. The eye lies in a bony orbit and it is surrounded by a protective cushion of fat. We will be dissecting the sheep or cow eyeball in the next couple of weeks. Accessory structures of the eye include the following. Um, the palpebrae, which is your eyelids. It is the superficial epithelium of the eye, and the lacrimal apparatus is where the lacrimal gland is. That's where you cry. The purpose of these structures allow you to protect your eye, like your eyelid, keeps out dust and other particles. It lubricates your eyes, especially when you cry. Crying is actually good because it cleans your eyes of all uh, dirts and waste products. Your eyelid, uh, known as the palpebrae, it is broken into the medial canthus and the lateral canthus. The canthus is basically the corner of the eye, whether it's inside towards the nose or outside towards the ears. The canthus is the corner of an eye. Eyelashes are robust hairs that prevent foreign matter from reaching the surface of the eye. Uh, lashes are especially longer in females for some reason. And they do help deter certain sunlight in some people at an angle. The lacrimal caruncle is a mass of soft tissue. It contains glands producing thick secretions and it contributes to the gritty deposits that appear after a good night's sleep. This is the area of the eye in the middle. If you look towards the center of the nose, that's the part of the eye near the medial canthus. This lacrimal caruncle is the pink fleshy skin that's sticking out of your eye in the middle. And uh, when people rub their eyes, they kind of touch this part more than anything, and that's bad because it's open, exposed membrane, and your finger's been touching dirt, bacteria, and that's how people get sick, especially a thing called conjunctiva, which leads to conjunctivitis, pink eye. Conjunctiva is a epithelial covering of the inner side of the eyelids. When people get this, their eyes turn pink because of bacterial infections. Let's look at this picture. I want you to please highlight now, uh, when you do get a chance to after this video, please highlight lateral canthus. The sclera is the white part of the eye. Let's 
start from the top right. There's your eyelashes, which help to move debris out and block some sunlight. The pupil is the center of an eye. It is the dark uh, spot that opens and closes or widens due to dilation or constriction of your iris. The palpebrae is your eyelid. The uh, palpable fissure is just an angle where your lids close. The medial canthus is the inside of your eyes. This is where the um, corner is located. The lacrimal caruncle, we just said, is the part that is the pink epithelial or the fleshy part of your eyes that you normally rub or try to move that morning gunk out when you wake up in the morning. That is where the yellow and crustification comes out. In other words, eye boogers. The corneal limbus is basically an area circumferring the corneas, cornea. The lacrimal apparatus produces and distributes and removes tears. Uh, the fornix is a pocket where the conjunctiva joins the conjunctiva. The lacrimal gland, this is more important. Please know the lacrimal gland. This is your tear gland. This is where you cry after you watch The Notebook or some sappy romance story. Secretions contain lysosome. Lysosome, as we talked about in the animal cell, it was an organelle that helped to destroy bacteria. Well, guess what? It's also a fluid in your eyes, and it helps to uh, provide an antibacterial enzyme, which kills bacteria. There are three major areas of the eyeball. Number one, the outside fibrous layer. Number two, the intermediate vascular layer. And number three, the deep inner layer. Let's look at it here. When you look at the outside of your eye, which people see, you know, the color of your eyes, ooh, you have blue eyes, green eyes, they're looking at your um, iris. The iris is what gives you color, and that is found in a vascular layer. Vascular meaning that's where blood is. When people get bloodshot eyes, the blood comes from that area. Another layer in the front is called the fibrous layer, and that contains the cornea. The cornea is the membrane of the eyeball. It is basically in the center and it covers the outside of the iris. The sclera is all the white tissue of the eye. So that's basically the left and the right side of the eye outside of the pupil and iris. The final layer is called the neural layer. It is deep. It is in the back where you will not be able to see on a person's face because it's facing the brain. This is housing the retina. The retina is the back side or posterior section of the eyes. Looking from this picture, you can see everything from a side view. And please make a note of everything here because we will dissect uh, a sheep's or a cow's eyeball coming soon. There are muscles that help your eyes rotate. Remember we talked about the cranial nerves, trochlear and abducens. Trochlear is lateral inferior movement where the abducens is complete horizontal left and right abduction movements. There are four rectus muscles and two oblique. The oblique muscles are located in a very diagonal location. The rectus muscles are completely either uh, horizontal, posteriorly, and anteriorly. All six of these muscles help your eyes move. This is what allows you to look left and right. So believe it or not, you've got muscles that help you move your eyesight. When people have double vision, they have a condition called diplopia. This is what the patient experiences. Now, the eyes do not look at the same point in the visual field. That means when you hold a finger up after someone had a concussion in a football game, the trainer or the doctor says, how many fingers am I holding? If they say more than one, they've got double vision called diplopia. A misalignment is a condition called strabismus. What is observed when you shine a light into the eye? Uh, not reflected in the same place on both eyes. This can be a cause of diplopia, meaning a person's eye could be looking straight in one eyeball and the next eyeball is looking to the left. Kind of like um, inappropriate or unappropriated eyes. This can cause certain signs such as cross-eyed people, people who gaze and they have movements that don't move together or conjugate, a medial or lateral and this fixed or sometimes not fixed. What are the causes of this? Weakness or paralysis of the extrinsic muscles of the eye. The only way to fix that is surgical correction. The ocular motor nerve can also could be damaged. Remember that. That was the cranial nerve that allows you to functionally move the muscles of the eyeball. 
Another condition is called amblyopia. Amblyopia. This is basically called lazy eye. When you cover or you cover a test at five-year-old stages, this is when most uh, children are diagnosed with having a lazy eye. One eye is looking straight, whereas the other eye is completely dropped to the ground or to the sides. This is amblyopia or lazy eye. If the child cannot be treated or patched in the eye by the age of six, the brain will ignore this lazy eye and the visual pathway degenerates. The eye functionality can become blind or this person can be um, seriously um, at a loss for eyesight in that entire eye that is affected. Again, the fibrous layer is the layer that contains the sclera. The sclera is the white part of your eye. The cornea is the covering or the membrane over the circular center of the eye. Corneal limbus is a border between the cornea and the sclera. It is what separates those two. In the vascular area, which means blood, happy, is the iris. The iris is what gives you the color of your eyes. And when you have a concussion, you have constricted or dilated pupils, this is because the iris is what moves. It changes the diameter of the pupil. This is a picture of the Ishihara a blindness test. Some people have color blindness. Some people can't see uh, green, blue, red, orange. And this is a chart that you look at. And if you're not color blind, you can see a number in there. Tell me, what number do you see?